Shall we open our Bibles this morning to the book of Exodus? We come to chapter 33. We talk a lot at this time of year about our independence and the Declaration of Independence. One thing I like about our country's birthday is we celebrate our birthday on the day, the date that we claimed we were independent, not on the date that we proved it or that we won the war. Our independence was not something decided by others. It was something decided by us. It is something that we declared and then defended and existed in. But I want to talk this morning about something more spiritual than the Declaration of Independence. I want to talk about a Declaration of Dependence. Because as we, we as Christians, we don't want to be independent of the Lord. We want to be dependent upon the Lord because we need Him. We were created to need Him. And there's an Old Testament passage, 17 verses, here in Exodus 33, in which we have the children of Israel who had just kind of messed up things. They had been complaining and complaining and complaining, and the Lord got angry with them, and uh, He had to deal with them. And we find how the Lord dealt with them and how He dealt with Moses. But there's a theme here. There's a theme here that I want us to pick up on and then elaborate on that has to do with a declaration of dependence. We find this in Exodus chapter 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, For I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Now, let's catch what's happening here. Until this point, the Lord's very presence had been with them. He had appeared in the the pillar of fire and the pillar of smoke over the the tabernacle uh, referred to as the Shekinah glory of the Lord. So the Lord himself was with them in the camp. Now the Lord is saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to send an angel, a created being, and prepare the way. I'm going to keep my promise to you to bring you into the promised land. But I'm not going to be there with you in my presence. Because if I did that now, I'd destroy you. Now what God is is doing is he's letting them know how precious and how serious a thing it is to not have the presence of the Lord. He's giving them a warning that your behavior is making it to where my presence cannot be among you as I would wish it to be and want it to be. So this is what he said, uh, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, say unto the children of Israel, ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come up in the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. Now what they're doing, what they're, God is giving them probation. He's giving them a time to think. They are being called on the carpet, as it were. I'm going to do something with you. I want you to take your ornaments off. Now what this means is I'm, I'm going to be like a doctor examining you. I'm going to be like a judge trying you. Don't come to me looking fancy. Don't come to me trying to impress me. I want you to humble yourselves and just be people because I'm going to deal with you. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, (coughs) which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out into the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, uh, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshiped and every man in his tent door. Now, what the Bible is referring to is the previous relationship that until this point was happening. 
uh, the Lord would appear them with them, and he would be with them in the camp. Now notice, uh, and all the people saw the cloudy pillar. And then verse 11, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again unto the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of, out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, and this is the Lord speaking, uh, this is Moses speaking unto the Lord. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Now what Moses is saying here, we don't just want an angel, we don't just want your distant uh, presence. We want your presence with us. And if you're not going to be with us in your presence, I don't want to go. So Moses is insisting that he does want the presence of the Lord, even if that means judgment, even if that means chastisement. We want your presence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, and from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing, also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Dear Father, I pray that you'd help us to grasp the concept of the presence of the Lord, and how much we desperately need and depend upon your presence. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Here we find that Moses interceded for Israel, and the prayer that he made was that, Lord, we want your presence with us, and we don't want to operate as we operate. We don't want to do what we've been called to do. We don't want to go where we're supposed to go and perform what we're supposed to perform if you're not going to be with us. We need you. We depend upon you. We don't want to be just another nation. We don't want to be just another people. We want to be a people of God. Now, for 247 years, our country's founders uh, made a document, and for these 247 years, this Declaration of Independence has been when we calculate our nation's birthday. And for a good part of that time, especially early on, I believe our country saw the presence of the Lord. Uh, we saw the Lord working uh, through various means and various things to bring us to become a nation, a free nation, a nation that has liberty, a nation that was founded on the principles of the Word of God. And if we understand our nation's history, our, our nation was not just built by patriots. Our nation was built by Christians, by people who honored the Lord. And even those who did not call themselves Christians respected Christianity and believed it was a good thing and promoted it every time they could. So this political document that we have meant that we were independent of a tyrannical nation. But listen, we don't ever mean as Christians to be independent of the Lord. The Lord is a kind and loving king. He is someone that we very much need. So I want to say today, as a Christian and as a pastor, we need to make a declaration of dependence upon the Lord and say, Lord, we need your presence. There are things that we're not going to be able to do unless you are with us in person. There are things that we have been called to do in your word that are impossible for us to do in the flesh. And we need the Spirit of God, His very presence among us, to do them. We are in need of Him. And so I want to list several things uh, that have to do with, uh, with His presence. Now, let's catch, first of all, the point that the Lord's presence can be challenged. The Lord's 
presence can be uh, taxed. His patience can be taxed. The children of Israel were stiff-necked. Uh, that's a biblical term meaning that they were stubborn and rebellious. They were a nation of complainers. If we read through uh, the ordeal that Moses had with Israel, I wonder how he stayed sane. Uh, they were completely uh, out of control at times, complaining, uh, we're all going to die. Why didn't we just stay safe and full in Egypt? The same people who were crying because of the cruelty of their taskmasters now thought Egypt was better. And, and they would say, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I don't like this food. Moses does too much. He takes too much into himself. Where's Moses when we need him? We're all going to die. We should return to Egypt. Over and over this is going on. And there were times when Moses just said, Lord, I'm going to stand back and would you just smite them? And there were other times when the Lord said, Moses, will you just stand back? I'm going to smite them. And I'm glad that Moses and the Lord never got on the same page. Because the Lord would intercede with Moses or Moses would intercede with the Lord and they, they didn't get wiped out. But listen, what, what is happening here is the same thing that can happen to you and I. We can, we can make it because of our attitude and because of our behavior, our actions, where the Lord's presence is not where it ought to be. Now, now listen, let's understand something. The Lord fills the earth, right? The Lord's everywhere. There's nowhere the Lord isn't. But I'm talking about His full functioning presence where we are in harmony with Him and in submission to Him and where we are able to sense and to benefit from the power of His presence. I'm talking about that. I'm not talking about the Lord is in this room somewhere. I'm talking about the Lord is operating in my life in a functional way. And so let's understand that number one, we need dependence on the Lord's presence. We need His very presence. We need Him here. And Moses said, if thy presence go not with us, carry us not up hence. I don't want to go. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. The Apostle Paul was going through a difficult time. He was going through trials and tribulations. And we come to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Now what Paul was rejoicing in is that he had the Lord standing with him. Now one of the things that we understand is that the Apostle Paul, he did not always have that full, dynamic, obvious, personal presence of the Lord. It isn't like every time Paul sat down and had breakfast, he could set a table for two. It wasn't like the, that every move Paul made, he had a direct line from God. There were times when Paul thought something and the Lord says no, and then thought something else and the Lord said no. So there were times when Paul was operating within the sphere of God's presence, but there are other times when the absolute fullness of God's presence was with Paul. And those were the times that affected him the most and encouraged him the most. The Lord's presence is what provides all the other things and all the other comforts of our hearts. So we have today to make a declaration of dependence upon the Lord's presence. We need Him here with us. Now, you and I, if we're honest, must admit that a good part of our lives we just go about because it's routine, it's daily business, it's what we do, and we don't pray for special grace we don't invite the Lord to be with us in a full uh, manifestation of His presence uh, when we tie on our shoes uh, or when we perhaps uh, run an errand to the store. We don't say, Lord, give me grace to make it there and back. Uh, we do so many things that we just expect things to be okay. And even, I think, the, the apostles and even the, the great men of God uh, were not so micromanaging in that sense. Uh, I think it was Spurgeon who said this, the Lord will lead you to the green pastures, but he may not tell you which blade of grass to nibble upon. We have a certain latitude. But listen, here's the thing. I want the Lord close by. I want to be close by him because there are times when I really want to know. And so one of the things is his provision. 
dependence upon his provision. That's number two. Now, Jesus knows that we live on this earth and we are uh, physical beings and we have needs. The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 8, Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. So God knows that we have needs. He, he knows that we have to have food and drink. He knows that we have to have clothes and shelter and the, the basics of life. God understands this. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, Charge them that, that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And so, while we are to work to make a living, we know that ultimately it is the Lord who provides this. If you have a job, you have a job because you are healthy enough to work. If you have a skilled job, you have a skilled job because you're smart enough to learn that job and have the gifts of God, the skills it takes to perform in that job. Uh, these are things that the Lord has provided for you. There are some people who cannot work. They're not able, either mentally or physically. They have some reason why they're not able to work. If you work, work a job, it is the provision of the Lord that gave you that ability. And we should be thankful for it. And so he provides those things for us. Uh, he provides help when we're down. I think of the Lord's provision. It's not just about eating and having our physical needs met. Uh, listen, there are e emotional needs and social needs, and uh, there are certain uh, things that we have that are intangibles. Uh, we need to have a sense of purpose. We need to have a sense of personal joy, a certain sense of satisfaction, a certain degree of mental uh, health. Uh, these are things that we need from the Lord, and we are dependent on His provision. Uh, listen, there, there are some things that we're not going to have unless we have it from God, because this world is not going to provide it. That's why every Christian should be in fellowship with the Lord and in tune with the Lord and in contact with the Lord through prayer and through devotion. Why? Because we need His provision for us. Uh, listen, you know, sometimes the, the, the smallest thing makes all the difference in the world. Just a word from God, just a, a, a little uh, encouragement, something to come in. Sometimes this, the Lord uses someone else's mouth uh, to do that. Sometimes the Lord may move upon someone to encourage you, or the Lord may move upon you to encourage some other person. I was riding down the road when, with my wife, and we were just riding down the road, and, and uh, I began to complain. And uh, I, I said, boy, I tell you, that COVID thing really was bad. I really was sick. I came near dying as I ever been, and I went on about it, and I said, I'm so weak now, and uh, things don't taste right. And I was just going on and on about it. And, and uh, she said, you're not dead, are you? Well, the thing is, we encourage each other like this. She reminded me, we, 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 we made it. We both had a bad case, and, and we, I'm not dead. And I said, I said yeah, you know, you said it right. And I thanked her for it. Why? Because I, I'm not dead. Listen, anything short of not being dead right now is pretty good. And, and so I, I'm trying to stop complaining about that. Stop trying to make comparisons. Uh, I'm just glad that I'm still here and still kicking and still able to do what I do. Sometimes the Lord's provision is physical. Sometimes it is mental. Sometimes it is emotional. But I want the Lord's presence to help me with all the things that I need in my life from provision. Also, dependence on the Lord's protection. The Lord's protection. All through the Bible, we see the Lord is involved in the protection uh, business, that He's taking care of His own. And apart from those times when God allows us to go through persecution, even martyrs, uh, that's a special gift of God. But we see that God protects. Uh, Psalm 94, verse 16 and 18, David speaking. He said, Who will rise up for me against evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Uh, David was rejoicing in the protection of God. Another place, Psalm 127, verse 1. He said, Except the Lord build the house... They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. The Lord is watching over you. The Lord is taking care of you. 
I don't know if we'll ever know now, but I believe that one day we may get to know what all went on in heaven when we were in trouble and God helped us. How many times did God spare you from a traffic accident and you didn't even know it? Uh, one time there was this man who had a flat tire. He was on his way to a preaching engagement and he had a flat tire and he was upset and he was thinking, Lord, why did you let me have a flat tire? This is going to make me late to my speaking engagement. And so he got out and he fixed the tire and uh, he got going down the road and it wasn't uh, long before he came up to a place where there was a terrible accident. Multiple people had been injured and some killed. And then he had to stop and think, Lord, if it hadn't have been for that flat tire, that could have very easily been me. There are many things like that that we don't even know about. Other things that mystify us. And we wonder, how in the world did I survive that? And yet we did. Uh, when I was a boy, uh, I was one of those boys that they say is all boy. Uh, and boys are the reason uh, why uh, mothers get gray hair earlier, worrying about them. Uh, just keeping them alive is a challenge uh, at that age. And uh, the, thing, the things that I did and the, the, the risks that I took... And I look back on them now, and I think that when I get to heaven, I'm going to find my guardian angel, and he'll be laying up against a tree, all sweaty and resting, saying, I'm glad you finally made it here. You wore me out. I don't know. But I want to thank him. I want to thank him for all the times he took care of me. And uh, sometimes I wondered, where were you when this happened or that happened? But maybe that was the Lord said, let that happen to him. He needs to learn. But we need the Lord's protection. I am dependent on His protection. We can take all the means that we want, but except the Lord keep the house, they labor in vain uh, that watch. <clears throat> Dependence on the Lord's power. Listen, you and I cannot do the work of the Lord in the flesh. There are things that you and I can do, and there are things that only the Spirit of God can do. And we are dependent upon the Lord's power. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now Jesus is standing before them. He's saying, All power is given unto me, that is to Jesus, in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Now what Jesus is saying here to you and me, to the church, I have all power and I'm with you. Now the things that are in between are the things that we're supposed to operate in. But let's put these two things together. Jesus said, I have all power and I am with you. Let's don't forget that. Let's don't miss that. Because that's why winning people to the Lord and baptizing them and teaching them all things whatsoever I've commanded you is going to happen because the Lord is with us. And if we are not close to the Lord, if we are not uh, enjoying the benefits of His presence in this sense, then His power is not going to be operating in our lives. 1 Corinthians 2.5 the Bible says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now, there have been people that I have won to the Lord, quote unquote, and it didn't stick. It didn't take. I, I talked to them. I shared some scripture with them. I led them in a prayer. And when they prayed the prayer, I, I got up feeling good about it, wonderful, somebody got saved, somebody came to know the Lord. But they didn't want to follow the Lord, they didn't want to come to church, they didn't want to uh, change in their lives, they didn't want to uh, be close to other Christians, they didn't want to follow Christ and His Word. And you know what happened? I won them. I won them. But then I've seen others whom the Lord won, and I just happened to be around when it happened. And listen, it took, and it took deep, and it took good, and it took long, and they're, they're serving the Lord to this day. Listen, that's the power of God. That's the power of God. Listen, 
this one, two, three, repeat after me form of evangelism, I think has been a dangerous thing because what happens is people get inoculated against the real thing. I've gone to talk to people about their soul and I've said, have you ever asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save you? Have you ever repented of your sins and called on him? Have you ever been saved? And they said, yeah, I did that at vacation Bible school when I was 10 years old. And I say, wonderful. Uh, how's your life been since? And they say, eh. And I think, whoa, wow. Where are you? Where's your faith? What happened? And then I've seen other people who, I, I was just there when it happened. I, I was knocking on doors one time. Back when knocking on doors, you'd actually may have someone open a door. Uh, is, uh, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, a time you could knock on a door and they'd open it. You're, some of you are old enough to remember that. Now you can knock on 10 doors and all you see is, is curtains being drawn and, and the TV turned down and, and everybody quiet. They're not going to open the door. But we were in a neighborhood, a fairly well-to-do neighborhood, knocking on doors. And this, uh, this lady answered the door. And I said, hello, I'm from uh, Jacksonville Baptist Temple. I'm here to talk to you about the Lord. Or, uh, do you know the Lord? And, 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 and she said, uh, uh, you know, I've been thinking about those things. <laughs> uh, you, you, ever have a, you, ever, you ever gone fishing and, and a fish just jump in the boat? I mean, she'd been thinking about those things. And so on the, on the door stoop, I started sharing with her some scriptures and everything. And, and she was listening intently. And, and her husband came and he said, uh, telephone. And she said like that. And she didn't allow the distraction. So I, I shared some more. And then he said, long distance. And she, she went like that again, like, leave me alone. And I was able to share scriptures with her and lead her in a prayer of salvation right there on her front porch. And tears were in her eyes. I think it was as real a thing as I've ever seen. And I'm telling you what, it, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. The power of the Lord was present. I just happened to be there when it happened. It could have been anybody, but it just happened to be me. Now listen, the, the closer we walk with the Lord and the more faithful we are in just trying to be where the Lord is and doing what the Lord would have us to do, we're going to see more of those kind of things. Even in the dark days that we live in now, if we would be more faithful and be in the presence of the Lord, I, would, I believe He would use us more. So we're dependent on the Lord's power. Listen, you don't have the ability to change a person from darkness to light, but God does. You don't have the ability to call a person into their soul and woo them towards salvation. Only God can do that. You can give them the Word, but only the Word through the Holy Spirit of God can bring somebody to faith. We also need dependence on the Lord's promises. The Lord's promises. We need this for ourselves. Listen, if we are going to be healthy, functioning human beings, there are some things we have to have. And the most important thing I believe that we need to have if we're going to be functioning, healthy human beings, we have to have some form of hope. Some form of hope. Now, I would have said purpose because purpose is very important. But listen, purpose that is not defined and guided by hope doesn't exist. There is no purpose if we're not headed somewhere. There is no meaning to purpose if that purpose doesn't have an end, if that purpose doesn't have a destination. If we're just here to enjoy ourselves and then die and be dead, that's not much of a life. Uh, that's, that's a cow. Uh, that's a goat. That's a frog. Uh, we as human beings have this need that we need to have something beyond what is known. Do you know why babies cry when they're born? Well, one thing, they've just gone through a traumatic experience, to be said. But you know why they, be, they cry the next day and the next day and the next? They're crying for nourishment. They want nourishment. They want mother's milk. You know why they want mother's milk? Because it exists. If it didn't exist, there would be no creatures that need it. Do you know why that when, when you don't get to breathe for a while, you go into a panic? Have, has anybody here been underwater too long and you thought you were going to drown? Has anybody had something happen and your, your air was cut off and you begin to panic? You, you know why you need to breathe? Because air exists. You know why, if you're like me, 
every four to five hours, you get this gnawing feeling in your stomach. It's time to eat. And with me, it's time to eat. Where, where is it? Why isn't it right here now? You know why? Because food exists. You wouldn't need it if it didn't exist. There would be no creatures that need food if food didn't exist. You know why human beings all over the world have religion and think about what's next and yearn for more and other than here? Because it exists and we know it deep in our hearts. We were made in the image of God and we were made for eternity and we know it. We know there's something more than is just here. And all the world is making up some reason other than what God has revealed to satisfy that God-shaped vacuum in the heart. We need dependence on the Lord's promises. We need eternal life. We need it. Uh, we need to know there's something more beyond. There's something. Listen, I want to think there's something better, don't you? I've seen what this world has to offer. I've looked around and I've seen the injustice and the cruelty and the disorganization and the chaos and the disease and the sickness and the death that I mentioned, the injustice, the, the things that I see. There's got to be better than this. This can't be what a loving creator God intended. I believe according to the word of God that God made everything right, but Satan tempted man and then the fall came and that's what made everything bad. And God's going to restore it. He's going to bring it back. Eternal life. We have a dependence on the Lord's promise that He said, I'm going to be with you forever through the end of the age. Not only will I live forever, but I'm going to live forever with God. That is the hope that I have. That is the purpose of life. Listen, I'm here for a reason. You're here for a reason. Uh, we're not just drifting. We're not just leaves on the water. We're not just jellyfish floating along with the tides. We have a purpose. We have uh, what we do makes a difference. And that leads me to this next thought. And dependence on the Lord promises, we, we, we are promised rewards and compensation for what we do and what we go through. That gives me an incentive to behave better than I would otherwise. If, if I, listen, my father-in-law who I loved very much. His name was Roy, Roy Tomlin, good man, a wise man. And he grew up in the country, kind of poor, and went through a lot of hardships and difficult times. One thing I noticed about him is he knew how to save money. He knew how to bargain. He knew how to get a deal. And uh, he, he, he taught me uh, that you only have so much wealth, you only have so much, but if you can find a way to stretch your dollars and try to find a way uh, to, 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 you know, to bargain, that you'll come out better. And even though I think he was of English descent, I think there were, must have been some scotch in him as well, uh, because he had that trait of being able to find a deal. I loved him for it. And so I remember one time uh, he was making a deal on buying something. He looked at an ad in the paper and he was buying, a, I think it was a motorboat, uh, or, or a boat motor, rather, and uh, <clears throat> there was a certain amount set, and so he, 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 he said, I need to come look at it, and so he said, come with me. So we went, and we looked at the, the, the boat motor, and, and uh, the, the fellow said, this is the price, and, and he had a way of, of putting a toothpick in his mouth and just creating tension. He'd put that toothpick in his mouth, and he'd look at it, and he'd look away, and he'd think, and he'd say, and, and he offered him, I think, two or three hundred dollars less than what he asked. And the man said, oh, I don't know. So he went to chewing a toothpick and thinking again. And he said, I'll get back with him. He went to walk away. And the fellow says, okay, I'll sell it to you for that. And I'm in awe of that. I'm watching. I'm thinking, man, that's a master, a master at work. And I, I, said, I said, Roy, I said, how do you do that? How, how do you do it? I, said, I need to learn how to do that. And he said, he said, listen, where else today could I have made $200 in 30 minutes? And I thought it through, and I thought, that's wisdom. But listen, he had a purpose of life that his decisions, the way he lived, would benefit his family, would benefit his loved ones, and we all got to ride in that boat. We all got to go out to sea in it and fish and have a good time. Why? Because he knew how to live. He knew how to think. He had a purpose. There, the, listen, the, the decisions that you make, the way that God made you, 
He has a reason for you to be here. And sometimes it's to be the example of somebody else in that area. How many of you are good at everything? None of us. Listen, there's some things that I'm not good at. The first time I tried to practice the lesson that Roy Tomlin gave me about bargaining and dickering, I, I was buying a headboard. Uh, we went to a place where they sold used furniture. And so I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bargain. So they had this headboard. I think it was a sale for $20, you know, a used headboard and uh, for the bed. And I, I thought, I chewed a toothpick a while, you know. I'll give you 15 for it. And I was nervous from head to toe. I almost had the jitters. You know, my stomach was fluctuating and I felt like angels were weeping. And just, it, it just wasn't my thing, you know. But here's what he did. He said, well, okay. And I thought, okay, $15. And I left. I saved $5. Well, the next week I rode by that place and it was a big closed sign on it, out of business. And I thought, I shut them down. If I'd paid $20 instead of 15, maybe he'd still be in business. He'd be in curse. I'm just telling you, we're not good at everything. That place was way long gone before that $5 wouldn't have made one bit of difference. But my point is, everybody's not good at everything. Some people are born with one talent. Some people are born with another talent. Some people are born with, well, they don't have any talent at all in that area. But here's what I know. Dependence on the Lord's promises. Part of it is this. I can receive a reward for the things that God has gifted me with and has given me opportunity to do. And that's my arena of service. I learned early how to drive nails, how to saw wood. I learned how to do carpentry. I learned how to do handyman things. And God's used me to do that kind of thing. I learned early how to, uh, when I was a teenager, God led me into public speaking. He led me into teaching and preaching God's word. And God has used me in that area to be a blessing and to help people in their faith. God has given me purpose. I depend on him for my life the promises that he has made. I'm counting on them. I'm counting on them. My life makes a difference. Your life makes a difference. Now, the children of Israel, they displayed their repentant hearts by removing their ornaments. They had jewelry. They had earrings. They had different ornaments that they had, uh, and they, they took them off, and they just got plain before the Lord. No pretenses, no putting on of airs. It was symbolic. Now, the Lord can speak to you while you're wearing your jewelry. That's not a point. But, but they, they made an outward display of an inward reality. Lord, it's just me here. Just me talking to you. See me plain. See me as I am. They had no self-awareness. They had no pretenses. They were coming to God with no personal agenda and no demands other than the Lord's presence. And they were submitting to his possible judgment. And the Lord said, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. We need today in this church, here at Bridge Church in Fort Collins, Colorado, United States, planet Earth. Here, we need right here, each of us in our hearts and collectively at his, as his church, the presence of the Lord. We need to recognize His presence. We need to function as his, in His presence. We need to be open to His presence. And we need to be obedient to His presence. And let's stop putting on airs and stop thinking, look at me, and let's look at Him. Because He is the one that gave us these promises. Maybe we need to remove from our hearts and minds all notions and ideas and plans and pretenses and human wisdom. For years, I would go to seminars, and I would take notes, and I would listen to what they said, and I would come back and try to implement it, and it would not work here as it worked there. Maybe God's telling us something. Maybe God's saying, listen, logistics and human wisdom aren't how Bridge Church is supposed to operate. 
This is a place where the Holy Spirit of God alone has say. And maybe we need to listen. Maybe we need to open our ears and have a seminar with the greatest church growth expert in the world, Jesus Christ, and let him tell us how to be a healthy church. Amen? And it is the presence of the Lord that we need. Listen, if you are here today, you are here as a Christian today because somewhere at some time in your life, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to your heart and drew you to Jesus Christ. God can do more of that. God will do more of that as we declare our dependence on Him. Dear Father, we declare now our dependence on You. We recognize that without You, we're nothing. And without Your power, we cannot perform that which you've asked us to do. Lord, we need you in our individual lives. And so, Lord, may we stay close. Lord, may we draw near. Lord, may we remove from ourselves the hindrances and the distractions. And Lord, may we be in your presence and lead us and guide us and empower us, we pray. And Lord, may lost people come to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and we'll sing again until